Hello, welcome back to Brown Bell Broad, and thank you so much for tuning in today. So your girl turned 35 this year, and I can't believe that I'm 35. I still feel like I'm in my 20s. I still feel so young at heart. Um, and I thought, hmm, what do I wish I would have told my 20-year-old self? So if you want to hear some of that insight, then continue watching. Okay, so the first piece of advice that I wish I would have known in my 20s was to just jump. Because the only way to learn how to fly is to jump and build wings on the way down. There is a quote that I have held with me since uh, my mid-twenties by Maya Angelou, and she says that I don't want to just merely survive, I want to thrive. And I really wish that I would have embraced that at the start of my twenties rather than waiting until life became riddled with sadness and depression before realizing that I really needed to be okay with falling and building myself into something that is yet to be, right? So a lot of times I think because we spent our entire, almost our entire childhood, if not all of it, being told what to do and what not to do is that we begin to lose trust in ourselves, in our ability to create the life that we want. We begin to doubt our own potential. And I really wish that I had let go of that at the start of my 20s because it wasn't until I was 25 that I actually decided to move abroad and, not, and I didn't really have a clear idea of where I was heading or where I was going. Um, and that was okay. That was okay. You don't always have to have everything figured out when you want to do something. It's okay to only have sort of a scratch of an idea and pursue it. But just jump. Stop waiting for things to be right because they will never be right. My second piece of advice would have been to trust the unknown because soon you will blossom in ways that you could never fathom. I was the type of person that, um, because everything was dictated for me, I was afraid to do things that I've never done before, especially if they conflicted with the dreams that were bestowed upon me by my parents, by my teachers, you know, by mentors, by people who really cared about me, I was so worried about disappointing them and not fulfilling or living up to their expectations that I was continuously disappointing myself. And the only way to come back to that sense of wholeness is really to step and create a path that doesn't exist, right? Especially if you've been a person who you really just followed the paths that everyone else has created for you. I remember when I decided to move to Australia, you know, in my mid-20s, as I said earlier, and Lord, I did not know what I was doing. I didn't have a clear plan. I didn't... If someone would have told me that I would be like who I am now, I wouldn't have believed them. I would have been like, how? Like, how do I get there? Like, how? How is it possible? And really trusting on the unknown is to really follow the crumbs of curiosity and build this foundation of love each and every single day. Okay, so this one, this one I feel like isn't talked about enough, right? My third piece of advice to myself would have been to trust your pain. It is there to guide you just as much as love is. So in the era of positive thought, anything that is perceived as negative, which includes pain, is often dismissed 
and we usually turn our heads away from it because if it isn't laughter and joy, it's there to destroy us. And the reality is, is that's just not true. Pain is there to tell you that something is wrong, right? Pain is, when you're sick, it's not just like the fact that like you need to take medicine. Oftentimes when you're sick, it's your body telling you that you need to rest, right? When you're sick or you're ill, it's your body telling you that something's not right in your life. It's not surface level stuff, it's so deep. One of the biggest voids in my life happened when I was working in a corporate job and making a ton of money in America. I hated life. <laughs> I was living the American dream and I hated life. Oh man, I, used to feel, I don't know how many people can relate to this, but on Sunday, I would feel so sick because I knew I was gonna have to go to work on Monday. And I hated my job. I hated sitting in a cubicle. Life sucked. And that void never went away. It didn't matter how much I would go, how many festivals I would go to, how many parties I would go to, you know, how many clothes I would get. That void just kept knocking on my door to tell me that I'm not going away. And I'm so glad that I finally acknowledged it because it was telling me like, this is not your truth. This is not where you're meant to be. You need to be in a place that makes you feel whole. And it is not going to be at the hands of other people. It will only be in the hands of your own doing. So listen to the pain. It's there to teach you, not break you. Okay, so this piece of advice I learned really late in life. And I really wish that I would have learned it earlier. Um, and so my advice to myself in my 20s would definitely be to learn about healthy relationships and what they really look like. I'm someone that grew up as a people pleaser and it was something that was just very natural to me. I always wanted people around me to be happy um, and I would dismiss my own well-being in the process. I didn't know what a healthy relationship looked like. I didn't know it was this reciprocal relationship of giving and receiving. Most of the times it was just me giving. <laughs> and I was I would never get anything out of it. Um, so I would feel so depleted at the end of um, some of these friendships. Uh, and one of the things that I learned only recently in my early 30s that I would definitely have told you know, my 20 year old self is to practice boundaries with kindness, right? So being kind, but creating boundaries, you know? So what are the things that you're not accepting if people are always taking from you and they're never giving love or compassion or empathy, then that is not a healthy relationship. If you're always the one giving love and it is not reciprocated, that is not a healthy relationship. If they're always taking advantage of you and they dismiss your well-being, that is not a healthy relationship. If they're always making jokes about you and all of these backside com comments, if they're never cheering for you when you succeed, but they always seem to be there when you're down, you know what I mean? That's not a healthy relationship. And I... It took me a long time to learn that and a lot of heartache. Um, so I definitely would have told myself that in my 20s. Okay, the last one <laughs> is a really beautiful one. Your soulmate will meet you when you're ready. I know, in our 20s, we, we ready to settle down. We want to meet, especially as, you know, women. We, we really want a partner, right? We want someone to share our life with. And I just spent so much time just looking. <laughs> and you know what? Once I stopped looking, my soulmate arrived. Spend more time enjoying each moment of your life in the beauty and simplicity. Your soulmate will meet you wherever you are. I met my soulmate in Australia. 
in a whole other continent. I could have never dreamt that up in a million years. And yet it came to be. So simply live in the now and enjoy this present moment. I hope you enjoyed the advice that I would have given my 20 year old self. Let me know what advice you would give your 20 year old self or yourself in your 20s, if you're in your 30s or, or older. And if you're in your 20s, does this insight resonate with you? Or do you have um, some insight for yourself even though you're currently in your 20s? Um, so on that note, I want to wish you lots of love and light and a peaceful year to come. Be well.